King of glory comes the nations, rejoices. Open the gates, people him lift up your voices. Hosanna, Filio David, Benedictus Quius, Quivenit in nomine Domini. Rexi In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. We will now enjoin all our viewers at home to please raise their palms as the Archbishop will now bless the palm branches. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethany on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a coat with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to the daughter Zion, behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass and on a coat the fall of a beast of burden the disciples went and did as jesus had ordered them they brought the ass and the coat 
and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat on them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We, by the grace of God, celebrate Palm Sunday. We recall Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. We recall that Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem. We are reminded that that donkey, such a very lucky donkey, the one that was able to bear Jesus into the city, the Lord calls on us all to become donkeys for Christ, bringing him to wherever we may find ourselves. Donkeys for Christ are lucky donkeys, and each of us should endeavor to make himself or herself available to be a donkey for Christ, so that Christ may ride into the hearts of all whom we meet. May the Lord grant us the grace to do this, as we celebrate Palm Sunday this year, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now go forth in peace in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And speak good. Gloria laus et Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility 
for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my hair. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my bed. I did not cover my face against insults and speed to. The Lord comes to my help so that I am touched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken, forsaken me? me? You 
who fear the Lord give him praise. O sons of Jacob, give him glory. Wither him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine. Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high, and gave him the name which is above other names, so that all beings in the heavens on earth and in the underworld should bend the nail at the name of Jesus and that every tongue shall claim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father the word of the Lord thanks be to God may we all rise for the gospel acclamation Accepting death, death on a cross, but God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, the man named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty silver pieces, and from that moment, he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make, make the preparation for you for us to the last of all? He replied. Go to so and so in the city and say to him, The master says, My time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When the evening came, he was at table with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn. Not, Not I, I, Lord, Lord surely, surely, he answered. Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn. Not I, Rabbi, surely. Jesus answered. They are your own words. 
Now, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. At this, Peter said, Though all lose faith in you, I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I tell you solemnly, this very night, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with them to a small estate called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and sadness came over him and great distress. Then he said to them, My soul is so full to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he says to Peter, So you had not the strength to keep awake with me one hour? You should be awake and praying not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cup cannot pass by without my drinking it, your will be done. And he came back again and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them there, he went away again and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hand of sinners. Get up. Let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. He was still speaking when Jesus, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a large number of men armed with swords and clubs, sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the traitor had arranged a sign with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge. So he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. Then they came forward, seized Jesus, and took him in charge. At that, one of the followers of Jesus grasped his sword and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, who would promptly send more than twelve legions of angels to my defense? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say, this is the way it must be? It was at this time that Jesus says to the crowds, 
Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I sat teaching in the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. Now all this happens to fulfill the prophecies in scripture. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. The men who had arrested Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, and when he reached the high priest's palace, he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, however false, on which they might pass the death sentence. But they could not find any, though several lying witnesses came forward. Eventually, two stepped forward and made a statement. This man said, I have power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, I put you on oath by the living God to tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onward, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. As this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What need of witnesses have we now? There, you have just heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They answered, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and hit him with their fists. Others said as they struck him, Play the prophet Christ, who eats you then. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and the servant girl came up to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again with an oath he denied it. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, You are, you are one of them for sure. Why? Your accent gives you away. Then he started calling down curses on himself and swearing. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crew, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and led him away to hand him over to Pilate, the governor. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, Judas, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the 30 pieces of silver back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? That is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary, he made up and went and hanged himself. The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury, for it is blood money. So they discussed the matter and bought the potters filled with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of the prophet Jeremiah were then fulfilled. And they took the 30 silver pieces, the sum at which the precious one was prized by children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field. 
just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And having twisted some thorns in crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King, King of, of the, the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him, for he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, 
there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, This man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Let us kneel. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In, In truth, this, this was, was the, the Son, Son of, of God. God. And many women were there, watching from a distance. The same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is, when preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, your excellency we recall that this impostor said while he was still alive after three days i shall rise again therefore give the order to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day for fear his disciples come and steal him and tell the people he has been raised from the dead this last piece of fraud will be worse than what went before. Pilate said to them, You may have your guards. Go and make all as secure as you know how. So they went and made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers, my dear sisters in Christ, I greet all of you on this holy day in the most holy name of Jesus. Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus, 
at the mention of whose name all knees shall bend and all tongues proclaim that he is Lord. Jesus, the one about whom the people say, Hosanna to the Son of David. May his holy name be praised now and forevermore. Amen. This Sunday, my dear brothers and sisters, is one Sunday that has two names. It is called Palm Sunday. It is also called Passion Sunday. These two names indicate the two celebrations that we have on this day. The first celebration is the commemoration of the joyful and triumphal entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. That is why it is called Palm Sunday. The second celebration of today is marking the beginning of the Holy Week. During this week, we shall reenact the Passion, the Crucifixion, and the death of Jesus on the cross. In order to lead and introduce us into the events of this week, we celebrate today Passion Sunday, the second name for this Sunday. We know, dear friends, that one of the major highlights of the celebrations of today is the joyful procession along the streets, singing and praising the Lord with palm fronds in our hands. Of course, the lockdown occasioned by COVID-19 in our state has denied us the excitement of that procession. However, the words of St. Paul in his first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18, comes in handy to teach us what our attitude should be, even as we go through the trying times that we are going through at the moment. St. Paul says, Give thanks to God in all things. That is what God expects of you. Give thanks to God in all things, in every single thing, because that is what God expects of you. So, dear friends, even in the state of our lockdown, even in our ability, inability to do the traditional Palm Sunday procession, in our inability to physically come together to celebrate Passion Sunday, we give thanks. We give thanks because we know and we are convinced that God turns all things to the good and the advantage of all those who love him. May the joy of this day not be lost on any one of us through Christ our Lord. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, procession or not, we must not lose sight of the significance of this day as Palm Sunday. This day is one day that we are all invited, indeed, we are all challenged to welcome Jesus anew into our hearts and also to pledge to be his disciples. Each of us, dear friends, is called upon to receive Jesus, welcome him into our lives so that we can follow wherever he leads. Unlike the people, the crowd who welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, on the day that he made the actual journey that we commemorate today, we must not say Hosanna today and crucify him in the course of time. In other words, we are called to welcome Jesus, to follow him faithfully, to follow him constantly and consistently. Welcome him, follow him faithfully, constantly 
and consistently. We must follow him when it is convenient and when it is inconvenient. We are told in John chapter 11 verse 56 that many of the people from the villages had gone to Jerusalem to purify themselves and prepare for the feast of the Passover. But they were looking out for Jesus. Looking out for Jesus in the temple to see whether he will come to the festival or not. Of course they were aware that their leaders, their religious leaders had taken a decision to kill Jesus. Because more and more people were coming to faith. Many people were coming to believe in Jesus because his teachings were credible. They were backed up by the authority of scripture and the miracles that he had worked. So they wondered whether Jesus would take the risk of coming to Jerusalem for the, past, for the Passover, knowing fully well that he might be killed. Therefore, the people were overjoyed when they saw Jesus coming into Jerusalem riding on the back of the donkey. They came out with great enthusiasm to welcome him. They knew him well as he had traveled and, uh, and uh, had gone among them doing great things. They knew him well. They had heard him preach. He had traveled around their villages. They had seen him cure the sick, heal the paralytic, show care for sinners, widows, and orphans. Therefore, they were happy to welcome him into Jerusalem. As scripture says, they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Of course, the city dwellers didn't know Jesus. And so they were asking, who is this? It was the villagers that received him, welcomed him, and introduced him to the city dwellers. But then, only a few days more, the same crowd who introduced Jesus would shout, crucify him. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, perhaps they are shouting crucify him if they, a few days later is understandable because their knowledge and experience of who Jesus is was limited. And secondly, they were highly under the influence of their religious leaders. But for us, my dear friends, it would be hardly understandable if we deny Jesus. If we do not follow him faithfully, consistently, and constantly as his disciples, we have a better and a more qualitative experience of Jesus. We have had experience of him in more ways than those of Jerusalem on the day he journeyed there. We have a lot more knowledge of him as one risen from the dead and who has touched each of us in different ways. That is why on a day like this we must examine ourselves and discover the ways in which we may have betrayed Jesus, the ways in which we may have failed to stand up for the values of the gospel. And that leads me to the second celebration of today the beginning of the Holy Week, the most important week leading to the most important day, the Feast of the Resurrection of Christ. During this week, my dear friends, we shall relieve the actual events that led to the death of Christ on the cross. We shall come in contact again with those characters that took part in the events of the suffering and death of Jesus. The long passion narrative that we heard today not only introduces us to the events of the week, it also shows us a number of ways through which we might have also been betraying Jesus. As we fail to live by the values of the gospel, we betray Jesus. He is 
as we exhibit the same sort of shortcomings as the people in the gospel reading of today, we end up committing the same sins as they committed. I want to take a few examples. Judas. Judas was the first person about whom we heard in the gospel passage of today. He was one of the prominent apostles. He was very well trusted, trusted enough as to be given the task of managing the finances of the group. But then, see how he betrayed Jesus. For a paltry sum of 30 pieces of silver, he delivered Jesus to his enemies. Now, 30 pieces of silver is said to be the equivalent of between $185 and $216, something in between. Of course, we know that with the depreciation of the value of our Naira today, that would amount to about 80,000 Naira. So for 80,000 Naira, Judas betrayed the creator of the universe. He betrayed the savior of the world and sold him. Indeed, he shows very clearly that the love of money is the root of all evils. Let us ask my friends, do we ever play, do we ever display similar behaviors as Judas? Anyone who engages in ritual or occultic activities for the sake of material benefit is a betrayer like that of Judas. Anyone who has ever taken a decision that impacts in a negative way on the faith and on the church, perhaps in the line of his work, that person has betrayed Jesus for the sake of money. Corrupt and fraudulent activities that harm the common good for the sake of money amount to a betrayal like that of Judas. Each of us need to examine ourselves as we enter the Holy Week. The scriptures tell us that Jesus took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him to the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was so sad and he said, my soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. Jesus needed them to keep awake. But three times he came back from his prayer. Three times he met them asleep. What those three apostles demonstrated was laziness. Laziness in watching with Jesus. But you know, dear friends, we too can show laziness in our pattern of behavior, especially when it comes to spiritual matters. We can show laziness in prayers. We can show laziness in family prayers. We can show laziness in reading the scriptures. We can show laziness in participating in the life of the parish. Anytime we display behavior of laziness, we are like Peter and the other two apostles. Finally, Judas again. Peter and Judas were both prominent among the apostles. Both of them betrayed Jesus. Both of them deserted him when he needed them most, when he needed them most. Neither of them was better than the other in their betrayal, in their sinfulness. But what distinguished them from each other is that Peter had hope, but Judas did not. Judas despaired because he became so depressed. By his sin of despair, he went ahead to commit suicide. And dear friends, we must never lapse into despair. Despair by our faith is a mortal sin. A mortal sin because it denies the goodness and the mercy of God. Anyone 
who goes into despair is saying that God is unable to take control of some situation in his life and therefore he denies the omnipotence of God. That was a sin of Judas. Yes, indeed, times are hard. Business may not be going well. We may have financial difficulties. We may have health challenges. There may be despair in the land around us. We should never doubt the ability of God to turn things around. I pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that in our conduct, in our mode of behavior, we may not be like Judas who despaired and committed suicide, but rather look on the bright side and see God taking action in our situation. May God in his goodness grant us the grace of perseverance, particularly in moments of difficulty in our faith. It's our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do in unum de eo. O shrem omnipotentem, Patorem chali esemu, Visibili umu omnium, Esivisibili Let's 
Brothers, dear sisters, in these days of Holy Week, when Christ prayed and entreated his Father in the anguish of his passion, let us pray to the Lord, not trusting in our own good deeds, but in his power to save us. Our response shall be, and strengthen our belief. And strengthen our belief. For the church. May she be one with her Lord, who gave his life in loving surrender to his Father, so that those who believe in him might live the new life of grace. Lord, hear our prayer. And strengthen our belief. For the world in which we live. May all the word received from God, true life and abiding peace, through the redeeming blood of Christ, who died for all. Lord, hear our prayer. And strengthen our belief. For the sick and suffering, may they unite their illness and pain with the sufferings of Christ in his passion for the salvation of the world. Lord, hear our prayer and strengthen our belief for believers and unbelievers everywhere through the mystery of god's providence may they share in the fruits of christ's passion which will bring them to the glory of rising again lord hear our prayer and strengthen our belief we pray to god in silence for our many needs We unite our prayers with Mary, Mother of the Crucified Lord, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. God our Father, we confess our guilt before you, but your compassion for us fills us with hope and a new purpose in life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hymn number, page 130 or 153.
most kind, we bring to offer us again to you, O Lord, O God, us again to and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that Though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them all to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in one joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Matem Tua Manusianus Domine Et Tuam Rex Resionem Confitemur Donec Venia Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and be praised and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso Est video patria omnipotenti Unitate spiritu sancti Omnis honor et gloria Per omnia secula seculorum Amen Chapter salutary bus moniti, a divine institution informati, how they must each other. As a loss of curious injuries, Quantidianum da nobis odie, 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but still say the word, and my soul shall be healed. him on page 169 or 192. Thou hast spared me 
that is not my walk embraced. Thou hast set me. Sacraments divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacraments most holy, O sacraments divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacraments most holy, O sacraments divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. those who are unable to receive communion physically we now make an act of spiritual communion O oh Jesus we believe that we are truly present in the most blessed sacrament of the altar we adore you we love you above all things and we desire with all our hearts to receive you into our souls but since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our souls and remain there forever. We embrace you as though you have already come. We unite ourselves entirely to you. Do not permit us to be ever separated from you again. Amen. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dying. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, have mercy on the dead. Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, grant us a holy and happy death. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now together pray the prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O God, our help in ages past, we, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life and nothing is impossible to you. You ask us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merits of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merits of the death and resurrection of Christ, and plead his saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us, and save us from this scourge 
that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of governments and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to develop the vaccine needed to stem the spread of this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their Creator. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray, Pray for us. All angels and saints of God. Pray, Pray for us. For our viewers at home, we should bear in mind that the crazy mass, as we all have already seen in the circular of the Archbishop, will not hold on Holy Thursday, neither will it hold at first arc on Tuesday. The crazy mass has been postponed to a later date after this pandemic. So the next activity we'll be having for the Holy Week is the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday at 6 p.m. So we encourage all our viewers at home to link up again and watch and follow the celebration spiritually from our homes. And we pray that the graces of this holy season will not pass any of us by through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the name of the Lord be blessed. Both now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made the heaven and earth. The blessing of the Almighty God, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon all of you today and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Go forth to this mass Thanks be to God. Processional hymn on page 120 or 143. <laughs> All hail the poor of Jesus' name Let angels prostrate fall Let angels 